Hello everyone and welcome back to the world of Percy Jackson. And today is the day. Today is the day that we've been waiting for since 2009 when we didn't even know that we were waiting for it. Today is the release day of Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods, a Percy Jackson and the Olympian story based around the adventures of Percy, Annabeth, and Grover, who really haven't been on a quest just together since the lightning thief. Now I stayed up all night reading, and by stayed up all night reading, I waited on bated breath until the pre-order that I did on Kindle uploaded to my Kindle at like 12.20 a.m. And then I was up till about 2.30, 2.40 reading. So it took me about two hours to read through Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods. Now, if you haven't read it yet, don't worry. This is going to be a spoiler-free review. I'm gonna talk about my first impressions of the book and who I think should be able to read it, i.e. If you haven't read certain books, or if you have read certain books, can you still read, enjoy, and understand Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods? Now, I am usually a fast reader, so it did take me about two hours to read this. For reference, the audiobook is seven hours and five minutes. So if that gives you some frame of reference for how long this could take you to read, there you go. It is the shortest Percy Jackson and the Olympians novel, coming in just a touch shorter than Sea of Monsters. Now, my first impressions directly after finishing this was that it was so cute. While this was technically a full-length novel, it had the feel more of a short story from the Rick Riordan universe. There was less stakes. This could definitely be a standalone novel if that is required of it. I don't think it will be a standalone novel, though. This just doesn't have the super high life or death saving the world stakes that a main novel series usually has within the Rick Riley universe. So I do think it falls more into a short story type story while still being a full length novel, albeit a shorter full length novel. Now we were told going into Chalice of the Gods that this takes place between Heroes of Olympus and Trials of Apollo, which is true. This takes place a couple of months after the end of Heroes of Olympus, which I am going through my timeline series right now, so those dates and everything will be there. This starts on the first day of school of Percy's senior year. And before we get into it, some of my predictions were absolutely correct and some of them were absolutely not correct. So if you've seen my videos or seen some of my predictions but haven't read Chalice of the Gods, I'm really curious what predictions I made you think are correct and what predictions I made you think are very much incorrect. Uh, because I was kind of surprised as what I got spot on because there are a couple of things I got spot on and then there was a couple of things I was very incorrect about. So if you have an idea, leave a comment down in the comment section below because I am curious. Having now finished Chalice of the Gods, I do think that we weren't lied to. You could have just read the first five books in Percy Jackson and the Olympians and jump directly into the Chalice of the Gods. I also think you don't necessarily had to have read any of the books. I think you could actually jump into Chalice of the Gods and not have read a singular other book within the Percy Jackson, Rick Riordan universe. I don't suggest that, but you could read it on its own. Or you could have read the first five books and then this book and everything will make sense. There will be a couple of things here and there that if you hadn't, say, read Heroes of Olympus specifically, you might be a little confused on. However, Rick does a really good job of explaining the important parts that you 
would have needed to pick up from Heroes of Olympus in order to understand this story. I will caution you that there are two relatively major spoilers for Heroes of Olympus in Chalice of the Gods. However, you might not realize that one of them is a spoiler until you are reading Heroes of Olympus and have forgotten that you've read this in Chalice of the Gods. So if you are planning on reading Heroes of Olympus and haven't quite gotten there yet, I think it is safe to read Chalice of the Gods if you want to read this before going into Heroes of Olympus. Or if you do not plan to read Heroes of Olympus and don't care that there are a couple points that might get spoiled for you, there you go. Moving into the non-spoilery bits that I really loved and enjoyed about this book. Going back to Percy, Annabeth, and Grover, especially in a relatively non-stressful way, i.e. they're just trying to get Percy into college, they're not trying to, you know, save the world, prevent destruction, the likelihood of death is relatively low, is so much fun. And we do in fact get a quite a bit more of Paul and Sally in this novel, which I am living for. I am living for having as much Paul and Sally in these novels as possible. I loved Paul and Sally. I want to spend an entire novel out of Paul and Sally's apartment, which we almost get in this novel. Because again, it starts the first week of school for Percy. There are hints towards both Magnus Chase and the adventures with the Kane siblings, which I wasn't sure either would happen, but I had very much hoped for. One of the Magnus Chase hints is very on the nose. The other, I had to reread the paragraph to understand that it was a kind of a reference towards something that you'll see in Magnus Chase. But again, it's very subtle, very sprinkled in there. The big ones for the Kane Chronicles, I'm not going to go into. It is a relatively small detail. It is something that would be easy to overlook. But I was already planning on doing a video on this subject. So I'm going to just leave it at that. There is a relatively major-ish hint at the adventures that Annabeth and Percy had with the Kane siblings. However, they are like a blink and you'll miss it kind of thing. If you don't, if you aren't thinking to look for it or you haven't like thought about this exact thing in detail like I have, you probably won't notice it. There is also a lot of parallel and a lot of throwback to the Lightning Thief, which I think makes sense. If you remember during interviews when Rick Riordan was announcing this novel, had originally come up with a few concepts for novels in order to pitch the Percy Jackson and the Olympians Disney Plus series. Now he said he didn't end up needing to pull that card, but that his publisher and his editor asked if he had anything that they could release ahead of the TV show or streaming show. And I very much think this serves that purpose. There is a lot of reference to the Lightning Thief. There's a lot of parallels to the Lightning Thief, a lot of snippets that are tied both directly in the text or if you've read the Lightning Thief relatively recently or remember things from the Lightning Thief, very easy to see the parallels which A, you have the nostalgia factor for people who have read the novels, grew up with the novels, and you also have a way to introduce people to these characters without them reading The Lightning Thief, which is interesting. And like I said earlier, I really do think that you can read this novel having read absolutely nothing else. So if you want a feel for what the upcoming TV series might be like, but you don't want to be spoiled for what that storyline could possibly be, I think this is a relatively good option to read 
get a feel for the characters, get kind of snippets for what the lightning thief might be like without possibly being spoiled for the TV show if that's something that's important to you. Now there are also two sort of references to the Trials of Apollo, which is the series that takes place directly after Heroes of Olympus, where this particular quest and possibly two more of these novels take place in between. There's two references to the first novel in Trials of Apollo, although one of them, Percy, is not quite paying attention and doesn't quite catch it. Which is an interesting thought and an interesting way to sort of reference a novel without referencing it and making it make sense. Now the other thing is if you are an audiobook person like I am, they did get the original narrator from the first five Percy Jackson and the Olympian series to narrate Chalice of the Gods. I have not listened to it yet, but I probably will this week. And this is probably a really hot take, but I actually really enjoyed Jesse Bernstein's production and reading narration of the original Percy Jackson and the Olympians series. So I'm excited that they brought the same person back, but I realize that that's probably just a really hot take that a lot of people don't agree with. There were also a lot more things that I really wanted to see than I expected to be able to see in such a short novel. It is like really fast paced, really quick, which I don't 100% remember the Percy Jackson and the Olympian novels feeling that way. And maybe I'll change my mind um, once I reread it a couple more times. But after just a first viewing and blowing through it, I do feel like it moved really fast and there was a lot packed into a very short amount of pages. But I really liked what was packed in there, so I'm not upset about it. It's just an observation. There will be more videos coming regarding Chalice of the Gods. And overall, I do suggest reading this. I think it's kind of a no-brainer with the type of channel I have, but I do think that this could be a really good introduction to Percy Jackson if you want or need that introduction, which is weird to say about a sixth book in a series, but I do think that that is the case. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think that there is anything super important plot-related moving forward. I and I do think this is more of a way to advertise and benefit from the upcoming Disney Plus show. But that doesn't mean it's not a fun time and it's not worth the read. So if you want to read it, read it. If you don't want to read it, don't read it. I don't think either way it matters. But if you've read the novel already, what did you think about it? Do you agree with my assessments? Do you disagree? If you haven't read it, are you planning on reading it? Are you planning on skipping it? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos on Percy Jackson and the Chalice of the Gods or the greater Rick Riordan universe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But until next time, stay safe out there, demigods.